okay so uh, for all antennas uh, we will be basically looking at few parameters for example is the board visible yes sir it is visible sir okay so for antenna design first we will uh, look at uh, s11 s11 i mean what is s1 means um, in the simulation we are doing antenna design in in our laptop or computer using cst so uh, cst we will design one antenna right so and we will radiate it in the simulation environment itself we, uh, the software itself give a signal and we start radiating so how we are getting s11 what is s11 means the first one is nothing but output port output port and the second one is nothing but input port understood understood yes sir yes sir so uh, the idea is like i have an antenna and we have a patch and i have the substrate and in the back side we have uh, ground then we have a feed line over here so here actually uh, we are in this portion only we are actually giving the input signal okay then the antenna start radiating okay and the reflection signal it start radiating so then the reflection signal will be coming back so s yes, 11 means this is port number 1 okay this where i am giving the signal is the port number 1 so i am giving input to port number 1 and i am taking output from same port number 1 that is called s yes, 11 understood Yes, sir. That, mean, that means reflection coefficient. This is nothing but we can say either reflection coefficient, either reflection coefficient, or I can say it as return loss. All these terms are same. Return loss. So that is called S one one. Okay. So that's actually we will look at. So basically, this S one one will be shown in a graph, x y graph. okay so in that xy graph this x axis will will have frequency okay in gigahertz and this y axis is nothing but uh, yes 11 this return return loss value in db unit is db okay and we will be getting some graph like this okay and we will basically look at minus 10 in the y axis we will look at minus 10 and we will draw a straight line across the graph okay and definitely the line will cross one point over here and the other point over here okay so we will consider this is f1 and this is f2 and the bandwidth of the antenna is nothing but f2 minus f1 understood got it Yes, sir. So this is how we measure the bandwidth, and uh, what is uh, uh, the frequency or resonant frequency? So for this end, now the resonant frequency is nothing but this point, the depth. Okay, so the corresponding frequency is nothing but the resonant frequency, and the corresponding return loss will be the this point value. This much is from this uh, S11 graph. we can identify we will get the bandwidth we will get the resonant frequency we will get the return loss value so we can get we will get the three values from this particular graph alone this is one parameter i mean basic thing then the second one is that uh uh we look at uh, gain then we will look at directivity okay and we maybe few people will use vswr voltage standing wave ratio that is basically 2 less than or equal to 2 okay the vswr should be less than or equal to 2 that also i will show you uh, so what is gain means input to power by output power how much power you are you are giving and how much power you are getting in the output side so that is called a gain so we will measure the gain of the antenna and directivity means suppose if there is one antenna 
it is start radiating so the pattern directivity means uh, how much power or the radiation focus to one particular direction okay so that is called a directivity so directivity also we will measure so this gain and directivity will be defined in dbi the unit is dbi okay so basically for microstrip antenna we can't able to achieve more than 5 or 6 in the lower band of frequency uh, if you go like 10 gigahertz or 15 gigahertz we can able to achieve more than uh, 6 gigahertz uh, dba value okay because since we are using fr4 as a substrate uh, then uh, the kind of uh, area like length and width of the antenna depends upon many factors uh, we will define uh, the ability to get the proper gain and the directivity so basically if we are using fr4 it is hard to get more than 5 or 6 dB. Okay. So let's see we will what will be the gain and directivity for your antenna also. So antenna design is all about you need to look at either improve the bandwidth or some people will look at uh, improve the bandwidth in a sense you can go for wide bandwidth. One thing you can go for wide bandwidth or you can go for uh, narrow band depends upon your application. Normally we will have one application for the particular application only we will design so it depends okay so you, maybe you you are going to uh, design an antenna for biomedical application then accordingly you will have some set of criteria okay so uh, either go for wide bandwidth and go for narrow band in your paper uh, it says like it is a wide bandwidth okay so wide bandwidth means the distance between f1 and f2 will be larger okay that is wide bandwidth if it is a narrow bandwidth you will get like this so the distance will be very small okay so that is wide bandwidth and narrow bandwidth okay then uh, the second thing is some people uh, probably we will be look at uh, this depth of this this uh, graph uh, define uh, how much you are getting this s11 s11 is return loss so basically we need to get more than minus 20 here minus 10 is a line so the depth should be larger than i mean more than this minus 20 means the antenna is processing processing a good return loss okay and and the area of frequency you are getting this resonation point okay uh, if you look at uh, the reference paper uh, the reference paper if you look at uh, this is one place one second yeah this is one place you can see here this point is around uh, to 4.5 right this is one resonation point then you can see around 5.2 you are getting one resonation point then you are getting nearly 4.8 then you are getting on nearly 8 gigahertz okay so these are the resonation point okay so first iteration you are getting 4.4 second iteration you are getting 5.2 and third iteration you are getting three resonance points so in this from this graph we can understand that this resonation point is not a criteria here but here you can see that for first iteration if i am drawing a line straight line from minus 10 okay if i am drawing a straight line from minus 10 see for red line that is first iteration the bandwidth is small okay and if you see the second iteration for blue it is drastically increased and for third line third iteration again it increased okay so here uh, in this paper they actually optimized the uh, uh, bandwidth of the antenna. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, uh, so that and uh, in this paper, I think they don't consider any other criteria. Uh, they changed a few length and all. WF width of the WF is nothing but width of the feed. They have changed. That also we will do. We can do. Uh, no issue. LG length of the ground actually this one we done already uh, that's it they actually don't consider other parameters like directivity and gain and all okay and they actually tested the antenna and so the simulation result and it tested antenna result is shown here okay so that's much is defined here again is there okay gain is there fine this is our, not all what uh, they displayed in the paper so now we move to our design so 
there are some variation little bit variations are there since uh, they don't give the actual readings okay so this is the antenna you can see that all the three pentagon is there and in the back side of the antenna you can see it is a partial ground can you see that you can see here see partial ground only okay so this ground length depends upon the ground length also we can i have one analysis uh, i i i just used three different lengths or two different lengths how the directivity is i mean how the s11 is changing i will show you so i will send you the design uh, and you need to i just open it then uh, i have already stored the result here go to this one dimensional result you can see in the left side from here from components you come down let's come down and you can see 1d result so click on 1d result then a set of folders will be open go to the second folder called s parameter in the side button you just click it then you can see s11 so this is your s11 as i mentioned okay so for this result you can see that uh, your your final design this is actually the result now i'm going to mark uh, i'm going to add some markers to identify the values so this is minus 10 line so in the minus 10 line i am i'm marking this point here it is cutting one point right so i add one marker there so the frequency is 3.5 and the corresponding s11 value is uh, it's 9 so i need to move little bit in yeah 10 okay so the 10 the minus 10 line it is cutting at a frequency of 3.5 i'm going to add one more marker exactly it is cutting here again 10 okay so we can consider uh, one so f1 and f2 two points are there so between f1 and f2 uh, if you minus so 6.3 minus 3.5 that is your bandwidth understood so 6.33 6. so 6. minus we have to do yes so? uh, that uh, two points value is written in the back uh, bottom side so depends upon that see oh. uh, one and two you can see no Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Point one value which is available here, you can see here, right? 192. Yes, so, yes, first frequency point one frequency is 3.5 and point two frequency is 6.3. Okay, okay, and sir. Those points corresponding, uh, yes, in the left side, uh, the left side value is here minus 10 because both lines are cutting minus uh, 10. So almost minus 10 is there. So the accurate value is 6.3 minus 3.5. That will be the bandwidth. Okay. And if you wanted to see the depth of the, the, the resonation point of uh, resonation frequency, the center point is actually the resonation frequency. So, okay. Let me. Okay, so this point 3 is here now, that is uh, the resonation point, which is around 4.2 gigahertz and you are getting a return loss in the y axis as minus 33. So this is your final performance. Okay, and this is by 3, I added 3 different uh, uh, pentagon and the final design, this is the value. So I have designed step by step actually one circle then one pentagon then added second circle so I have already stored all the result here right. so first pentagon this is the result second pentagon I added then you can see that the variation is there now so yellow color you can see here yellow color I mean orange color is first pentagon inside one I mean outer circle and outer pentagon then then I created a circle inside that, then created the second pentagon. That is this purple color. Okay, then you can easily see the variation over here. The bandwidth is increased, right? 
Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now I will show you the third one, third pentagon. Now third pentagon also you can see that uh, this is the point. Three points I will add, then you will understand. Here it is crossing. First point. Second point. Here it is crossing. And third point. Here it is crossing. Okay. And it is cutting almost in the same position where uh, the F1 is actually cutting the same position over here. But in the F2, we have three different positions. That means the bandwidth is increasing for each iteration. I mean, each pentagon is added, uh, the bandwidth is increased, keep on increasing. And uh, there is no much difference in the resonant frequency. It is around 4 to 4.2 in this range itself, you are getting the resonation frequency. So, without changing too much of your frequency, you are, you are able to achieve wide bandwidth. But in the reference paper, Depending upon the frequency they are getting, actually the frequency is shifting to the right side. That I can show you. See here. For each graph, red, blue and purple, uh, while they are improving the bandwidth, the frequency is actually shifting to the right side. So, that is also, maybe normally we will design an antenna for a particular frequency. That is actually the age. For example, you are designing an antenna for Bluetooth. Bluetooth frequency is 2.4. So, if you wanted to improve the bandwidth, then you should not deviate from that frequency. Okay, so in this case, actually they are deviating. But while writing the paper, we can say whatever we wanted to say. Okay, so that is not an issue. So here, at least we are sustaining nearer to 4 gigahertz. We are not actually giving too much of frequency variation, but still we are achieving uh, wide bandwidth. It depends upon the iteration. And this three pentagon, uh, this is the analysis. And ground also, I have made a few uh, comparison. You can see here these two graphs. Okay. So uh, initially, I have given ground means uh, this antenna. Second. Ground means while I am designing antenna, as you know, there are three layers. This is ground. Firstly, I give a full ground. Then I have same measurement, this is ground, GND, this is substrate. On top of that, we have uh, the circle and uh, inside pentagon structures. Okay, so first of all, I will cut 80 portion, 80 percentage of the portion. So we will be having a partial ground. So this length, I have made initially 3 centimeter, then I changed it to 4 centimeter. I mean mm millimeter so this length I actually vary so while varying the length you can see here uh, I have written DGS mean defective ground structure 3 mm and 4 mm so as you can see here if I am changing 3 mm to 4 mm then the reflection coefficient is increasing also so that is the main thing uh, the ground impact is you can able to increase the return loss so here the depth is small but while increasing 3 mm to 4 mm, the depth is increasing. Okay, because as I told you, the depth should be more than minus 20. Then only we can say that the return loss, the return loss for the antenna is good. So if I am keeping the ground length, the height of the ground is 3 mm, then I am roughly getting minus 20. But I increase it to 4 mm, then I am getting around 33 minus 33 dB. So for using that defective structure, actually we are improving uh, their return loss. And by iterations like three pentagon, I am keep on increasing my uh, bandwidth also. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, then we, we have some, uh, if you wanted to see uh, the directivity and gain. So, but by default, uh, they actually, you can see here in the far field result, see here, uh, you go down. So this one, one dimensional result, you can able to see this S11. If you go down, we have an option called far field in the bottom. So far field, if you click, then you can see by default, they will be having uh, the frequency is splitted into three. So you can see here f is equal to 2, f is equal to 5 and f is equal to 8. This is default frequencies the software itself uh, will take. Okay. So uh, 
if you wanted to see what will be the uh, power field that means gain and a directivity for fe is equal to 2 and fe is equal to 5 and fe is equal to 8 we can see okay so if you select this fe is equal to 2 then you will get this okay so one second let me labels plot and second there are some labels are here Okay, so uh, can you see the diagram? Yes, okay, so in yes, far field, you can see the in uh, nearer to the left side of this uh, diagram, uh, F is equal to 2, then you go down, the output is the directivity, then in the bottom, you can see the DIR is equal to 2.23 dBi. Okay, that means uh, directivity you are getting around 2.23 at the f is equal to 2 and if you choose f is equal to 5 you are getting 2.9 and if you choose f is equal to 8 uh, you are getting 4.16 okay so uh, likewise uh, then if you wanted to see gain uh, you need to select the option here in the top side uh, it is directivity so you need to select here and click on gain so if you click on gain uh, for f is equal to 2 you are getting negative gain actually minus 3 which is not acceptable and if you go to uh, f is equal to 5 you are getting 1.6 and for f is equal to 8 you are getting 3.16 likewise you can show and if you want to show the gain and the directivity of the antenna for exactly this frequency this frequency means this 4.2 then you need to delete uh, whether you wanted to uh, what is your requirement you want that exact frequency or okay i'll show i'll give you all the i will give you for this exact frequency is it fine okay sir. okay so okay, for sir. that uh, our field i need to delete all the frequencies simulations field monitor uh, you need to give the frequency as 4.2 select e field apply Select H field, apply, R field, apply. Click OK. Simulate. Wait two minutes, okay? I'll get the result. Okay. Okay. okay.
Okay, you there? Are you there? Yes, sir. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, sir. So I have simulated, and uh, yes. in the far field, uh, you can see only f is equal to four point two is there. Okay. So here you can see that you are getting gain of one point four and directivity of two point eight seven. So this is low. Why the reason is that so the directivity we can improve. How means generally in antenna design, uh, if the area of the antenna is high, if that means the length and the width. Okay. So this is not length. So this is the width. Okay, and this is the length. If the length and the width of the antenna is getting reduced, that means your gain as well as the directivity also reduce. This is one problem. And second problem is that the second criteria is that if we consider the ground initially, we designed full ground, then we cut half of the ground. I mean. The ground is here. Then we cut uh, we cut nearly one by third of the ground, and we remove those parts. So in finally our design according to the paper, the ground is this much. So around four mm, right? So if we are reducing the ground, then the problem is that when the antenna is actually radiating, then back backward radiation is also there. So if we keep a full ground, okay. If we keep a full ground, then the backward that is patch only actually radiating, okay, front patch. So when antenna radiating towards front, also the radiation will be there, back radiation also there. So if we keep a full ground, then the the copper plate that act as the ground will reflect the backward radiation. That backward radiation also focus to the front side. Okay, so the directivity and the gain will increase. But in our case, in order to optimize your bandwidth, we keep uh, this half of the ground. So instead of a full ground, if you are keeping one by third of the ground, then this backward radiation is not able to reflect back to the front side. Because of this reason only, we will be getting low gain. Okay, understood. So antenna design is all about it's a trade-off. If you are trying to look looking into to improve some parameter. Then the other few parameters will be getting down. You cannot satisfy getting uh, directivity, getting a higher gain, getting a higher bandwidth. Everything in a single design. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, so that is the issue. Yes, sir. And so in your case, you can say that your antenna is ultra. Uh, you are you are trying for a wide bandwidth. And in in lower frequency band, lower frequency band in the sense again actually, if you are doing some more modifications, we can able to get more more amount of actually. I just follow the paper, but if you are keep on changing some parameters or some values, and uh, we will adjust it means we can able to get more amount of bandwidth. Uh, if you are okay means I will give you the design and I will. Try to optimize a little bit more, but you can keep the design. If time permits, means I will keep. Uh, I will take tomorrow and today night also. And if wanted, means I will give you a little bit of. I will try, and I can able to optimize a little bit more also. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. So okay, this much. Sir. So I will give you the design file. So. I can't able to send as a single file because uh, you can see here the file name is new work August 2021. So the destination uh, this is actually the CST file. Uh, this one is the CST file. So along with the CST file, there is one folder is created new work August 2021. So I need to share both. Uh, simply i can share this new work august as a file in whatsapp but the problem is that the result is will not be there okay so without running once again just directly open it and you can see the result means uh, you need this file as well as this folder okay so i will zip it and i will mail you or i will 
share a drive just like how i share the cst software you download it extract it then you can double click on the file then the moment you double click it open in cst and you will you can see the result in the file itself no need to again run the software understood okay sir. okay okay sir fine any other doubts no sir uh, now sir uh, sir you told that uh, far field we took only yeah, 4.2 no sir i need all the values itself all the values then i because yeah that i will show you you just run it one second okay keep the result if you wanted to uh, i mean whichever the frequency you read actually uh, you can see here uh, in the simulation window uh, we need to give actually the frequency range so uh, the frequency range i given here is 228 okay so 228 means then it will automatically if i am not giving uh, e field electric field magnetic field and far field you can see here all the three frequency i mean fields e field h field and far field so if i give 2 and 8 then it will automatically take 2 as the minimum frequency 8 as the maximum frequency uh, 2 plus 8 10 by 2 5 as the mid frequency got it that's why in the starting yes, without i am setting any 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 parameter it automatically take 2 5 and 8 but once we do that only we will get to know that in the s11 what is the exact resonation point so first time we blankly we will uh, simulate it so we can see the result uh, that is s11 then again we can able to point out what is the exact resonation frequency so from that result we understood that the result exact resonation frequency is 4.2 then in the second simulation we deleted all the far field edge field we fix f f is equal to f1 to l1 because we need that frequency alone and if you are keeping f is equal to uh, the other two means uh, you can say if, if you are able to shift the frequency to those values means you can improve so mostly we will look at uh, yeah you can tell like this uh, i will show you the s11 okay so your resonation frequency is here but no need for 8 tunnel because uh, this range is not acceptable beyond this point 2 it is above minus 10 so that area is not required and uh, be behind this point 1 also we don't require between 1 and 2 only our response so 4 and i can 5 also you can see 5 is around here so it the return loss is around uh, 15 nearly 13 or something so those performance is not required your exact point is this 3 that is the maximum depth you are getting around 35 as the return loss that is the optimum value the antenna resonation point is around that value so that values uh, directivity and gain we required actually got it okay yes sir i got it sir and vswr i will show you uh, if you wanted to see vswr this one dimensional result you come down there is a folder called vswr so you just click on that there is a graph click that so uh, vswr generally uh, you are required performance you need to see your responses so uh, this s11 our uh, performance start from around 3.5 to uh, this uh, 4.2 in that range our required performance is from 3.5 to 6.33 in that range your vswr should be equal to or less than 2 okay equal or less than 2 we will see that click on vswr see from 3. Point, exactly from 3.5 till 6.33 your vswr you are getting is less than 2 correct which is nearer to 1 okay So exactly one or so resonation point you are getting around 4.2 so 4.2 actually your resonation point you are getting that means if you click at this is the resonation point you are getting the vswr around one so you are getting nice performance so vswr is one means accurate so and the condition is it should be less than two and if it is one means your antenna point resonation is good okay 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 so okay, that also one thing and uh, that's it we basically we will look at all these results for antenna and if you want uh, 
in the in the in the paper uh, you can see that the result this result here it is yeah you can see the circle okay this is actually e field and h field pattern if you want this result mean i actually show you the directivity and the gain in 3d okay so they given us polar chart so we can nicely show that click on f is equal to 4.2 then you are getting this 3d instead of 3d you can here choose polar if you choose polar then you will get that can you see that the same so likewise also you can yes, show sir. 3d means you are showing something little bit some people will show polar some people will show 3d both are fine Okay. Okay, sir. Yes. Sir. Hello. Sir, length of the feed line. Sir, length of the feed line and uh, length of the width has changed in the yeah, paper. Yeah, one month. second, one second. Let me open the paper. they do analysis yeah here no width of the feed and uh, yeah two points so that's what it, here they start from uh, feed actually right feed width of the feed one second i will i will show you uh, can you have time right yes sir i have time yes sir i have time no problem because uh, there is a option in csd one second uh, i let me save this as a new file file save as and i keep it as change in feed feed length because uh, otherwise the older result will be replaced i make a new file and uh, there is a so um, feed where is feed components your ground uh, not ground patch So can you show this is feed actually uh, this red color highlighted one no yes sir okay that is feed yes sir so i'll show you the dimension uh, the feed length is uh, minus 1.5 to 1.5 so while add up together it will be 3 mm correct yes sir okay so yes sir 1.5 yeah, 1.5 uh, i i just design in a, like how many people will go for different kind of measurement so i'll show you i will how i taken the measurement people will then go for different method so i i consider as x y axis okay so if i am i am i'm keeping this feed in the center here so this value is this is x axis this is minus x axis and this is minus y axis and this is plus y axis so this is in the center so i take this side as 1.5 and this side as minus 1.3 so the what is the total value 3 right yes sir so uh, like that only i did okay so some people will keep uh, the axis like this they start designing from only in the x y positive axis in that time means we need to take accordingly 3 mali means uh, maybe 3 to 6 like that they will take so the design is all about their uh, flexibility uh, so in our case minus 5 to a uh, minus 1.5 to 1.5 okay so in this feed length or we are getting this response s11 if you want means i will i will create one more folder and i will show you okay uh, there is a, instead of this uh, 
minus 1.52 p equal to 1.8 okay one second let me create a variable thanks this is feed width so fw a wf wf i can give value equal to minus one point five in the paper the value is two maximum value is four if you want four means minus one point five plus two point five right yeah. yes sir so, yes sir same. i can give here two point five okay do one thing uh, i will i need to this method is taking too much of time so in your paper uh, you have 2 mm 2.5 mm 3 mm 3.5 and 4 mm so this much condition they checked correct so yes, sir. we can do like uh, the, here you select this option uh, select this uh, feed so 1.5 to 1.5 means 3 mm okay if you want uh, okay. to three, uh, so in this result let me uh, i will show you two results okay uh, like like for 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 our case uh, we will keep 2 3 and 4 is that fine only three simulation required otherwise uh, 2.5 and 3.5 means it requires four sim uh, five simulations Sir, so two, two point five, three. Three. Ah, okay. That, that we can. Okay, fine. My project, In, three, no, my project uh, three, no, sir. Three mm. That's it. Two, two point five, three. Yes. It's better, no, sir. So, so I, I will create a folder here. I'll give you the result also. So, create a folder. And so the old result are in this compiler folder. So, below that, I create a folder and feed. It, I created a folder okay so this compare folder you will get all other results like three pentagons first pentagon second pentagon third pentagon then what about ground 3mm and what about ground 4mm results are there okay okay and okay sir. below that uh, this feed length is there I just created a folder so in that uh, now the current result is there s11 that is minus 1.5 to 1.5, correct? Yes? Yes, sir. So that means 3 mm. Yes, sir. Feed width is 3 mm. So I let me copy that to feed width. And I am writing it as WF equal to 3 mm. Okay, that result is available. Okay. And now i am going to change feed width so you required 3 now 2.5 right yes, sir. so 2.5 yes, means 
uh, I can write uh, minus uh, 2.5 by 2 and plus 2.5 by 2. It will take half of and you add up together, then it will come 2.5. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, yes, sir. You can see little bit it reduce. Correct? You can see the red line which is it reduce, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's yes, sir. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Let me simulate once again. Uh, just wait two minutes, we'll get the result. Sir, yes. I have one sir, I nice. have one single doubt, sir. If we simulated only length of a ground of 3 mm, if I simulate only 3 mm of ground, I, uh, I can get uh, pa yes, parameter, gain, yeah. directivity. Each also. time you are simulating, you will be getting different, different, different values. Okay. So okay. Uh, now you are changing the field width, right? Yes, sir. So I just explained yes, all the result the using uh, this field is equal to 3 mm, correct? Now you are changing means yes, your directivity changes, your gain changes, and also the bandwidth also changes. Okay. So oh, first okay. you tell about by keeping uh, that's why that, that's why they give one feed with is the proposed one. Okay, let's see now mm -hmm. because their dimensions are some little bit varying from ours. So if you do this, maybe you will get a better response if you are reducing the feed the bit or increase the feed bit that we don't know. Let's see that. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Sir, what is the formula of a length, length, uh, length formula and the width the formula, formula, sir? Basically, uh, software itself we can able to calculate. That I will show you how to calculate the width. Okay. Okay, sir. And they, they recently in my review they asked me a length of a form, length of a uh, rectangular patch. Yeah, rectangular we have formulas for circular actually. Um, predefined formulas are not there, but for rectangular we can. I will give you the formulas. Uh, there is an online calculator also. You can only the uh, only thing is you need you are using FR4 now. So FR4 uh, we can. Just put uh, the epsilon value is equal to 4.3, that is the uh, permittivity value. And at what frequency you wanted to resonate the antenna, then what will be the height of the substrate? 1.6. These three values for putting in the calculator, it will automatically give you the length and width of the patch. So that is basically for a micro strip, square kind of micro strip, we have predefined uh, equations are there. But for circular and this pentagon and all, it's no, there is no particular equations. It's all about trial and error method. The designing antenna is there, but uh, the novelty we show is like we will be doing different different slots, different different. We will be simply go behind. If now, now you can see you are using half of the ground. I mean, one by third of the ground, right? So for that, we don't have any, we don't mm -hmm. have any formulas, but. Uh, you can see in the paper also, they are trying 2 mm, 2.5 mm, 3 mm. Likewise, they will do multiple simulations and they are getting that uh, one particular value, getting nice response and they are taking that value as a proposed value. So, it's all about trial and error method. Do different, different trial and if error means go for the next trial and we will optimize our value. So, if, uh, what is the meaning trial of trial and error? Means, error? Yeah, trial and error means, yeah, trial and error means you are doing multiple simulations. Okay, so uh, you are uh, for the first trial, maybe uh, you are keeping one uh, value, then you are getting error means you are getting some low performance, then you are going for the next trial, maybe you, are, you can see that you are increasing the performance. Then again, you will try with the next value. Maybe again the third value, you will see that the drastically it will decrease. Likewise, multiple times you are trying and you are getting finding out that one particular value is actually the 
required performance, I mean the optimized performance, that will be taken as the, so trial and error means there is no predefined way, you do multiple times, then find out what is the value. Okay, sir. So the width of a micro strip line, sir. Formula yeah, we have no sir. The width of a micro strip line. I'll 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 show you. Just complete the design, okay. I mean it's running. After that I will show you. Okay. Okay, sir, no problem. So paper is okay for me. What you did the design? I is it okay to me, sir? Okay. And sir, I have a software, sir, have a software have problem, a problem, sir. Problem. Uh, I forget to tell you that uh, while installing, don't uh, turn on your internet connection. Because, sir, uh, why, sir? Are actually worth uh, four lakhs or five lakhs. This is paid software. So we are using cracked version. So while installing cracked version of software, you need to disconnect all the internet connectivity because during installation time, it will connect it to their server. That time, your crack will not work. If you turn down the means, you need to uninstall everything and turn off your internet connection, then start from first. Otherwise, during the cracking process, you will have some problem. Okay, sir. Uh, successfully yeah. downloaded sir after that i uh, install process i started do, do, do one thing do one uh, thing you, you really disconnect all the internet connection from your laptop okay uh, that patch file is not there i think uh, i will send you the patch file separately through mail okay turn off your internet i mean uh, if is there an antivirus is there in your computer no, okay then okay no sir uh, then you just uh, i will send the zip file you just extract it inside that patch file is there. Then you just use your mobile phone, play my video. Okay. You just follow the same. Okay, sir. Step by step. Using your mobile phone, you play the video. Step oh. by step, you follow it. Then you will get installed. Okay, sir. Sir, send me that uh, ah, I'll send CST that patch, well. sir. Uh, for that, yeah, I can install, no, sir. Okay. Uh, from which college actually you are studying? G. Narayanam Institute of Technology okay, in Hyderabad. Okay. So, if there is any BTEC students who are referring projects, mean you just uh, give them my contacts, okay? Okay. okay I'm having some okay, ready sir. antenna based projects. Okay, uh, sir. Now you can see the result is available. Uh, yes, parameter. So, this is, yeah, I'll show you. Previous value is uh, how much? Uh, 3 mm, right? Yes, sir. And this one is uh, rename it WF is equal to 2.5 mm. Can you see the difference? Okay, the, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, the frequency I can is see the little bit right. So, yes, uh, here also in this 2.5 and 3 proposed, they got the resonant frequency in 7.2, but for the here second case 3, they are getting two different frequencies. So the first one 5.7 is here the S1 is very low, so you can leave that. So 7.2 and 7.9, there is a small shift. So we also getting small shift. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, we'll see. And now let's see what will be the directivity and all. By changing this one, see. So uh, if you wanted to shift your frequency. This is the method. Hope you understand. Okay. So, you can okay. clearly tell them that 
if you wanted to shift your frequency if uh, here you see uh, initially the frequency is here over here uh, that is red color so yeah, over here and second position is here so the values over here you can see red color is uh, red color means 3 mm the frequency is 4.2 and the green color is 2.5 the frequency is 4.4 okay okay so okay, sir. by changing the reducing the value from 3 to 2.5 you changed 5 mm so you are you can able to shift to 0.2 gigahertz frequency to the right side okay so by adjusting your feed width you can able to shift the frequency towards the left or right that is one thing one um, uh, one conclusion you arrived okay and also in the previous result i show you uh, there is one result called dgs by adjusting uh, this ground height by adjusting the ground height uh, the green color is 3 mm and uh blue color is 4 mm so by increasing the ground height like slightly you can able to achieve the return loss maximum return loss so this point is if you see here uh, this point for the green color this point is around 32 minus 32 and for green color you are getting around uh, minus 21 only so by adjusting the ground plane you can able to get the uh, return loss maximum and by adjusting the feed width you can able to shift the frequency and by doing some modification in your patch that is the diagonal circle and all you can able to increase your uh, bandwidth so three different uh, conclusion you arrived okay okay then okay, here also if you wanted to see that f is equal to 2 one second view interactivity you need to select the 3d 3d uh now your directivity is 2.83 and your gain is 1.4 not that much of variation almost uh, nearby only okay so there is not huge and uh, you need to see your bandwidth now you can i think uh, slightly increased correct it not a touch the minus 10 not a touch yes, the minus yeah. it is going here so i think you if you can able to adjust this length means maybe you can able to increase the bandwidth also little bit or you can try uh, that try in the pentagon oh. also see i just follow the design uh, if you are telling me like to improve it in more means i can do because it's all about uh, this distance and all how much slots i am creating like we if i am going to directly adjust the, you can see a central hole is there no center pentagon that much yes, hole sir. is there if i am adjusting this particular pentagon's uh, length length means maybe we can easily optimize little bit of uh, bandwidth that also possible but we can try okay okay fine can we stop Okay. Hey, sir, is it fine, sir? So formulas. Formula, yeah, yeah. The length of a microstrip. The length of a microstrip plan and the width of a microstrip yeah, plan. One second, you just type width of the uh, width of the mic. This one. Uh,
So can you see here? Yes, so uh, you yes, need to like this. There is an inbuilt calculator to find the width actually. Okay. So, uh, but I don't okay. know. Uh, in the paper, I don't know what is the frequency. One second. Uh, they actually they didn't give any equation here. Uh, but we can take uh, see in the home. If you have home, you you have you have home, right? Home. In the last, you can see macros. Click on macros. Then there is an option called calculate. Then calculate second option. Analytical line impedance. Click on that. Then you will get this. This is for coaxial feed. You need to choose thin microstrip. T H I N. Thin microstrip. So this is the side view. Okay. So this top side red color that is actually the feed width. Okay. Can you see with the W? So that W will be calculated by. Uh, actually, this W is very very important because uh, the signal is actually given to this feeder. Okay, so there we have a concept called uh, impedance matching because uh, for an antenna we will be connecting a connector. So two material are joining there. Your cable as well as the antenna is joining there. So. When two devices are connecting, uh, impedance matching is very very important. If impedance matching is not correct, then we will face some lot of losses. So we need to make it as 50 ohm. That is the correct value. So in order to match this impedance 50 ohm, accordingly only we will choose W value. Okay. So in order to calculate this uh, W value, uh, we need to give what. For what frequency we will be designing your antenna? For consider, we don't know initially. In your paper also, they didn't mention like that. Maybe they will be fixing some frequency, and the response they obtained is in multiple frequencies. But they didn't mention in the paper. But let's consider. We consider. Uh, let's consider for five gigahertz. And what is H means your height, substrate height. It should be 1.6. And okay. I given I given frequency as five. Okay, height of the substrate is nothing but here it is labeled this blue color height that is 1.6, and the permittivity value is for FR4 it is 4.3. These three values I given, and for a simple uh, for for initial case I just give W is equal to it's a rough value. Okay, by giving W is equal to two, uh, you need you need to click on calculate. Then you can see that the impedance value is a not is equal to 64. Got it? So we need to make it as uh, as close as 50. So you need to change W value is equal to 3. Then click once again calculate. Now can you see how much it is? 51. Yeah. So it is almost closer to 50 ohm. Correct. So in the paper, yes, they actually they didn't use these kind of techniques. Okay, that's why they changed the different different value and actually they are trying to get the value. I mean, optimize the value. But actually, by keeping by adjusting this value, your impedance mismatch is happening. So in practical, they are actually getting some losses. So we need to avoid these losses. So if you get a perfect 50 value, means I can add here 3.125. Okay, then calculate once again. Now I am getting 50.11, correct? Yes, so this value I can give. Yes, sir. So the impedance mismatch is very, very less. So I can take it as 3.115 as the optimized value. Likewise, you can explain. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. Can I stop it? This recording.
Hey, sir, you can stop it, sir.